Welcome to TTC Cars, I'm Brian. I'm Craig, this and is Halloween edition. <laughs> it is, we got a tarantula on this. And we're starting out a little bit backwards, sorry for the wind by the way, but we have a monster of a three row. This is a big deal for the segment and I'm just really excited to show it to you. So this is the Grand Highlander and right here Craig, before we go anywhere else, I'm a max Come to the front, come to the front, come to the front. Let's talk Monroney. This guy right here is the Grand Highlander Platinum. It's all wheel drive, HV, comes to 59,000. 953 the only options are the emergency kit and the carpeted floor mats that's it this pretty trim, cool emergency kit it is pretty cool we'll, we'll show you that in a second i think i would actually want one for myself um figured if you're missing a, a kit it wasn't as i promised so anyways one of the story is let's check out the nose i'm just gonna get out of the way the aesthetics of this i realized after driving for a while it looks like absolutely nothing and i don't mean that in a bad way don't jump down and blow the the uh, comments. Yeah, you up mean yet. that in the best way possible. No, I really do. So if you are running from the cops, get this <laughs> because it has a bunch of power. And if you ran radar on this, it would come back and say 115. They would go, Nah, it can't be. Right. No, 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 this no thing way. does not look There's like no it can way. do that. There's it no way. Can't do that. When you see the zero to sixty time, you're not going to believe it. Absolutely not. Now I do want to say it is not ugly in any way. It looks like a Toyota Rav Six to me. Not a Rav Four. It's just a bigger Rav Four. Ooh, should it have been called the Rav Six? I would have loved that, by the way. Maybe Rav Eight because you can get an eight-seat version of this too. Mm. But the point of the story is, I've walked past it in the parking lot multiple times because I just haven't noticed it. And I, I made fun of by, you for that. You did, and then you drove it. What happened? Uh, I may have done the same thing. <laughs> okay, we're in the same boat. So, anyways, again, doesn't look bad. It just looks like nothing. The beige Camry of the '90s was really popular. That's what we're dealing with here. That's not a bad thing. They're gonna sell a million of these things. It's gonna be great. So let's talk about styling. You do have the matte black or the flat black. A little sense of adventure there. Yeah, exactly. You got a little capability to go with it. Check out our Hawaii hill test for that. And also go to our Texas truck channel to see this go up our hill test here. We're gonna do that as well. Mm. Really, really anxious about that actually. Um, so that's good. It can deflect kind of stones that fly off the tires and that kind of stuff. Speaking of tires, these are Continentals. They are quiet. They're contact LX20s. Eco Plus, um, which means they are meant to be quiet and smooth and have low rolling resistance, in which they do. 220, uh, 225-55R20 does have accessory mounts to do all those Thule and Yakima and all those cool roof racks and stuff. Man, this thing with a set of kayaks on the top might make it stand out in the parking lot. Ooh, then it would be a, definitely a RAV6. It'd be a RAV6 for sure. We need a wilderness version of this. Man, that, oh. that'd be cool. Okay, fuel door. Toyota's been, oh, that's right, it's a Toyota. We gotta hit a button. I got, I got it. Uh, it actually, Brian, uh, this is, you think it'd be here. No, right. no, farther, way down here, but, which after a couple days you'd get used to it. But well, this is just a rant on my end. Stop doing that. <laughs> like, when was the last time your fuel was stolen? Comment below if your fuel's ever been stolen recently in the last five years. Oh, I'd love to know that. Me too. Surely it's no one does. Never that. happened to me. So anyways, um, just, just make it a push like most people do. And it is not capless Toyota, man. They are consistent with, well, because look, this part number for this cap has been the same one they've used for 50 years and they still have it. You know what? It doesn't break. Yeah. Um, and as far as the, oh, there it is right there. It does have a holder. Does it work? Yeah, it's. Yeah, it works. It's, it's a learning curve. It's, I don't think it's a. a, a There's just a better option out there. There's better ways to just, do it, man. Convert. But, but to your point, it'll never break. Come around the back. You do have the RAV4 taillight. No, wait, that's not right. This is actually a scaled up RAV4 taillight. That's exactly what it is. It's exactly what it is. Again, not a complaint. No, this is a good thing. No, I think the RAV4 looks awesome. This yeah. is a good look. Keep it going. And the rear fascia has this dimensional letter. They found a way to do dimensional letters without dealing with glue that might be a problem later on. They actually cast it in the mold. Just freaking Toyota, man. They know what they're doing. They've got that figured out. I like that a lot. You do have a spoiler up top with a giant third tail light on the top. That looks pretty cool. Have you been behind one of these yet around town? I have not. I was not behind myself. Okay. Um, I was behind another one while driving this. Couldn't see either one of us, but I did see that tail light. It is bright. Is it? Okay. Profound. Yeah, I like it a lot. Um, you do have the hybrid max over here, and there's a little blue around there for a reason because of the hybrid. And that's the best part. Exactly. Down below, this particular one does not have a hitch um, accessory with it. But it is good to tow up to 5,000 pounds with the towing package. That is impressive, and it's mostly due to the electric motor that's hiding in the back here. We'll talk about that more in a minute when we hop to the front. But I do want to talk about exhaust tips. Look at these guys. Even on a hybrid, Volkswagen, Audi, are you listening? That's a real exhaust tip. It's not that hard to do. Or just, Ford. Or Ford. Yeah, I have Ford. And it looks good. Let's see if it sounds like anything. Hey man, we tried. All right, let's hop up front. All right, boys and girls, most important part of this thing is the powertrain. Let's check it out. Okay, the hood is medium weight. It does not have struts. Where's the prop right here? It is right here. There we go. But in typical Toyota fashion, it will never, ever, ever break. Yeah, that's also the same prop that they've used for 50 years. Yeah, it's probably on your old Land Cruiser, isn't it? All right, look, do you remember this motor in the Lexus we had, Craig? Oh yes. 2.4 liter turbo, 
with this turbo heat shield scoop thing, which is really interesting. We still don't quite know why it's that way. Trying to, it's trying to get cool air onto the turbo. Yeah. Somehow, some way. I remember the Lexus actually explained how it pulled air from the grill yeah. and actually cooled with ambient air while you're driving at yeah. speed. I call BS. I call BS, but hey, Taylor does things for a reason. Let's talk about power real quick. Combined together, electric motor turs and the gas motor is 400 foot pounds of torque. That is massive. That's a lot of shove. And the tricky part of that is you've got the gas motor here. You've got a six speed automatic, not a CVT. Cause in the hybrid trim, you have an eCVT. In the gas motor version, which is the, the same 2.4 turbo, it has a traditional eight speed auto. It doesn't have a CVT or any weirdness there. Um, and then, you, and then that's all the variables. Out back, you've got a bigger motor in this one. You've got a dedicated electric motor in the back. There's no drive shaft running into this floorboard to the rear, yet it's still all wheel drive. That's pretty cool. So it has a lot of control in how it splits it up. The interesting thing is they've got different ratings for combined power and individual power. So horsepower total is, let's see here, Hypermax, 362 horse at 6,000 RPM, 400 torque from two to 3,000 RPM. The gas motor on its own is 265 and 332. That's 12 foot pounds of torque more than the gas version of this without the hybrid combination at all. I find that interesting. Biggest deal here, Craig, is that electric motor. When we drove this thing in Hawaii and we boogied it, we felt that rear motor doing more than you ever thought it would. So in most all-wheel drive with a clutch pack style, in fact, the gas version of this with all-wheel drive is that way, it leans to front-wheel drive and then rear if it has to. This doesn't. This shoves equally and it, in fact, beats it to, it puts power down before the gas motor sometimes. And it feels it's a really very cool. interesting trick and way to do that. I don't know anyone else that's doing it that way. That's pretty interesting. No, me neither, but the calibration is not first gear. This feels really dialed. Yes. Um, this is the second or third of these we've driven. They've all been fine even pre-pros. So let's hop in the interior and check that out. All right, we've had a week with it. Let's see what the interior is like, because look, there's a lot going on in here. It's grand and there's a lot in here. Number one thing, we went to a star party last night and uh, it was dark and we needed to see, see things in the par dark parking lot at the state park. You see these lights up here? Oh, I didn't see that. Those are very bright at night. It just splashes all kinds of light down here. You can see everything that you're doing. It's really neat and really cool. And you've got plenty of room for things. Third row seats are up and we still have plenty of room up here or back here. So let's see what we've got anything in the back. We've done this before, but we'll do it again. Mm, a lot of battery going on in like, here. I think like we talked about in Hawaii, that's where you hide the tablets from the kids. Tablet, tablet gel. Tablet gel, yeah. Best thing right here is 1500 watts per because it is hybrid max. So instead of just like 400 watts or 200 watts, which are useless, 1500 watts, you can do some things with that. That's really nice. You can actually brew coffee with that. JBL, we'll talk more about JBL in a minute. These seats back here, Brian, little disappointed to be honest with you. You, you That's not how you fold them down. You use this and then you put them down, but then that happens. So okay, the seat, you gotta make, sure, right here. gotta make sure that seat's not too far back. Otherwise you can't get that down. Then you go walk around. It's kind of annoying. They come up easy though. You just pull them right back up. That part's good. Well, hold on, this one's not rubbing the seat in front of it. It's rubbing the actual console. Yeah, it's it's, it's kind of annoying. It's, it's kind of awkward. It's a little okay. bit of a letdown, like I said. Um, and then you can pull them back with an D. All right, Brian, for 75 bucks, you get a Toyota emergency assistant kit. And I'm just gonna go through it real quick. I couldn't believe what all was in here. Jumper cables and some decent ones. Like these are yeah. good jumper cables. Good gauge. Look at those. That, yeah. Good gauge. I okay. mean, that's nice. Um, electrical tape. You never know when you need that. I yeah. mean, seriously. It's hybrid. It's a <laughs> <laughs> flashlight, a hand squeeze flashlight. That's okay. cool. Emergency survival blanket. Okay. Um, you get, um, this is a little multi tool right here. That's pretty cool. Right. Microfiber towel because your glasses get dirty when you're doing stuff. Sure. A bungee cord for the bad guy you have back here. You can kind of, you okay. know, put him. All right. And then um, this is a poncho for who knows what else. You've got a strap. You've got a. This is well. This is this is a, a Land Rover. Um, no uh, pipe is what this no. is. Oh, oh, coolant crossover. Coolant crossover yeah, pipe. Yeah, yeah. What that is for Land Rovers. This is to help your Land Rover guys broke down on the side of the road. Okay. And then you get a nice bag after all that. Okay. All right, Brian. Time to uh, get into the actual seats of this. Let's get to the back. Pull the handle. It slides forward. Very easy. Got a little step for me. We've talked about this before, but let's just show you again. <sighs> it's nice. You know what? This works. Um, let's pull the seat back and see what kind of room I have. And we pull it back. Well, I can't pull it. Oh, here we go. Nope. nope. Well, the guy up front could actually move it further back. It come, but there, there is still enough room. Yeah, it's adult worthy. Look, you've seen the commercial, the Grand Highlander, and the, and the grandparents are in the back. Here's what I've got for you. That might work. Kids, don't do that to your grandparents. You put them in the second <laughs> row. Okay, on to the second row. Brian, second row. First thing first, start at the top. We got peasant blockers. Ooh. Look, the kids like that because guess what? Your kid sits right here and he's got a tablet and he's like, eh, the sunshine of my eye, right? Yeah. You put that up, problem solved. Solved. 
uh, cup holders okay. for Capri Suns or whatever else, or Hot Wheels. Okay. Then you got a nice grab handle or phone holder, which is nice. Yep, very good. And then, look, that's a pretty deep pocket for a water Ooh. bottle. That's That works. Yeah. Um, getting on in here, this has got the captain's chairs. You have two options. You can get captain's chairs or a bench seat. I think I would get a bench seat, but this works here. Um, and I can recline it, get in a nice spot. I can actually move it back and forth. So there's a little bit of versatility there. I can come up if they need more room, or I can keep it all the way back and pimp it out a little bit because I'm on a long road trip. Brian, most importantly though, um, there's a panoramic roof. Uh-oh. Which usually spells disaster. Let's okay. see what happens. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna get in here behind, I don't know who's sitting here last actually, but it's pimped out a little bit, but it's not bad. First things first, can I close the door with my leg here? Yes, and headroom room is not perfect, but you can little, pimp yours out a little bit. Eh. Yeah, I'm still touching a little bit, but it's not awful. We've certainly had worse, and this is definitely doable. I would I would not complain going to dinner in this. For Absolutely. Sure. You get uh, vents back here, and of course, vents in the back, and then you get tri uh, tri zone climate control so the, the kids back here can ruin the parents' life. Of course. But it's okay, parents, you can turn them off up front. There and is also, that. for your car seat kids, they can have the wind blowing or heated underneath them um, from their car seat. Yes, no, and that's actually a big deal. Look, chilled seats in the second row. Yeah. The only one, other one I know of off the top of my head is a Telluride. Yeah. Same. Okay, to the front. All right. All right, Brian, moving into the front, let's start with the door over here. You see that? That's kind of almost carbon fibery. Mm. That's for the max part. We'll talk about it on the drive in a minute. But um, And then you get, look, a nice big door handle. You can put a phone in and it holds it. Thank you. Every car manufacturer that makes that just a hole that drops through, yeah, when shame they, on you. Yeah. Shame on you. Not Toyota. They got it. Not Toyota. They got it. So um, nice big bottle holder there. Not a problem. Get on in. Before you get in, though, at night, this has a little... Uh, uh, puddle lights. Puddle lights, thank yeah. you. That say Grand Highlander, so everybody knows you got the Grand Highlander. That's pretty cool. So getting on in here, Brian, look at this. This is just a really nice color palette. We got some really yeah. cool um, colored seats. I couldn't find the color on the sticker, so I don't know. We'll call it brown. That's brown. Continuing on with the nice brown seats, you notice this little accent here. It looks a little rose goldy gold or coppery. Yeah. Um, Brian, what this is, is this is a very well styled interior. Ooh, soft, um, touch. soft touch. And look at this transition here. Instead of silver, normally you get like a chrome that blinds you as you drive or piano black you get some piano black but not all piano black not, not much that is a really nice transition this copper gold or rose gold finish is really nice with the stitching in it um just the, a really the, handsome the, you know what that indicates mm. hybrid max so the tater crown gets that too anything with the hybrid max has a rose gold treatment. okay very and good it's also on the shifter here that's how you can Ooh, tell. very good and it, no it looks really good so this is the best style here's Every female I've seen this seen this interior, they're like, oh, that looks really good. They've said nothing about the exterior, but the interior, they're like, oh, that's really nice. I thought you were going to cancel us so fast there. No, no, no. To that. Toyota has nailed no, the styling of this and the demographic that's going to be driving this. They are going to love it. Look, there's plenty of storage. You got, look, coffee, um, cookies for, you know, the driver. Storage, more storage down here, Brian. Look at that. You just hide it. It's out of the way. Um, USB A, USB, oh no, just USB C, USB C, yeah. USB C, USB C, USB C, nice little shelf. Love that. By the way, that phone charger worked excellently for me. No yes, complaints. Worked for me as well. New shifter, a little controversial in Toyota world, but you know what? It works once you get used to it. We've got a lot of modes here. Stay tuned to Texas Truck Channel for the hill test. We're going to try out rock and dirt and mud and sand and see if it actually does anything. But what you do in this car is you put it in sport and you mm -hmm. leave it there because it freaking you boogies. Send it. Um, let's start it though and let's see what happens. Uh, we, the gauge is here. You know, Brian, I'll be honest, I wish there was more we could do here. Same. Um, there's just not a lot. Of, uh, you don't have a tack and you have flappy paddles, which is great. But when you're in sport mode and flappy paddle and downshifting, you need it to actually, I need to know the tack. I need to know where I'm at. Yeah. And you don't get that. And that's really annoying. So that's that's something I wish was a thing. But, you know, whatever. Fuel mileage, we'll talk about that on the drive in a minute. But continuing on, Toyota gives you buttons galore. I got auto high beams, heated seats, all that fun stuff. And then plenty in here in the center stack, and it all works great. Sound system wise, Brian, it was meh. Yeah, it was well, okay. I expected better. The JBLs from Taylor are usually really good, and this one's fine. Yeah. yeah. With that, Brian, let's see how much the Max boogies. We know it does. We've done it before in Hawaii, but let's see what it does on home turf. Let's send it. All right, Brian, we're in the Toyota Grand Highlander Hybrid Max, mm -hmm. which means we get how much power? 400 torque and 363 horsepower. That's a lot. That's a bunch. Hit it. It's an auto, it's actually torque loaded a little bit, and... Pull the front 
tires off and the rear comes in. Oh, oh baby. You hear the electric motor in the back working, which is super go. cool. There's no, oh, there's 60. Where are we at? 6.54. Wow, right wow. Wow, okay. Didn't so, even finish explaining it. Yeah, exactly. So look, we did a little better when we drove this in Hawaii. We broke under the six second mark. Mm -hmm. With that, you in the car, I got a 6.04. So it's a six flat. That's very respectable. We're at elevation. We're yeah. not at sea level, yeah. so that that matters. I'm in Hawaii. We were freaking at sea level. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This the ocean was rather best possible. So yeah, yeah. Um, very commendable. Let's talk ride and drive real quick. Yeah. Let's put it back into normal mode. Very good. Calms down the engine. It goes back into hybrid mode when it is applicable. Mm -hmm. Ride and drive. I want to talk about shock tuning real fast because that is the most noticeable thing to me. Good. Okay. Nose dive galore. Mm -hmm. When you dip, get in the brakes, birth throttle, and it's just pitching and yawing the whole time up and down. Mm -hmm. But the trade off is the ride quality is very, very good. It is good. And you notice something about the uh, shock travel. What was that? The plenty of shock travel. There's, there's several bumps on my roads and my drive to work where I bottom out in certain cars. Lots of cars. And this one did not bottom out. At all. Lots of this, yeah. but I didn't, didn't right. bottom out. A lot yeah. of motion, and I was watching, we were doing lead follow shots earlier, I was watching the compression. There's a bunch of travel in that fender well. I can't believe how much travel it has. Considering something that's gonna haul eight people around, it's gotta manage that with payload. Yeah, and I, I will say, I do almost wonder, there's not very many cars I would almost want a stiffer suspension, but I'll say this, uh, my my better half did mention that she got a, felt a little sick in this at times. Oh, really? Okay. So I wonder if it's almost too much, maybe. Or maybe could have just been my driving, is what she told me. So, well, you know, it could just be that. That's possible. But look, we had the Sequoia recently. It does the same kind of shock tuning logic, and my whole family got cars that guy. Okay, so, so maybe it's a thing. I don't know. Might be a thing. Brian, what do you think about the heads up display? Uh, I actually like it a lot. You want to know why? Why? Crisp and clear. Yes. Not cluttered with a bunch of nonsense you don't need. And it's low on the hood. Yes, it's low on the hood. It stays low. And no matter my seating angle or head position, it's it works. Yeah, it, it stays works. in there. It doesn't get cut off. Really well calibrated. Versus like I have a Nissan, the Nissan Pathfinder. Oh, uh, yeah. I can never put it in the right spot where it doesn't cut something off. Or the Ford Escape we had to the flip up one. It's like <laughs> it's like kid picks on the yeah. old Max. Like yeah. It's, it's yeah. awful. You know. <laughs> There's a kid picks reference. For any of those that get that, <laughs> please comment. Kid yeah. picks. No one will, but yeah. Yeah. Um, um, that out of the way, though, Brian, the Toyota user interface we've talked about before. Phenomenal. Just yeah. on the money. Really works. good. Yep. Designed actually in North Texas near us um, mm -hmm. and, and implemented. You get a refreshed hood interior everywhere, and you said this already, but everything you touch and feel feels premium. Yeah. And I just think that it's the buyer that buys this is going to love it. Um, my entire synopsis on this thing, though, is that the powertrain is stellar. Mm -hmm. The mileage is not. Yeah, look, the mileage is, for what it is, is... You could be better. Look, Honda Pilots have get, gotten 25, 26, 27 miles a gallon. Without hybrid. For a long time without any hybrids. Just a regular V6. Nash has pretty V6. It's a little disappointing that this is such a big hybrid and it doesn't get better mileage. But yeah. I will say, if you're responsible, you will get 24 to 26. I think the okay. sticker says it should get 27. 27. Yeah. Um, so it's a little under, but it's the powertrain's kind of fun. It's kind of like when the EcoBoost came out in the Fords. Yeah. Everybody's like, well, it's not getting the mileage. But no one cared because of the boost part. It ripped. It ripped, And it was yeah. so much fun, you, you never... This one does the same thing. This is the hybrid equivalent of Ford's EcoBoost. It absolutely this, is. This is, a is the new EcoBoost. This is a hybrid that's not designed for necessarily raw fuel economy numbers, although it helps some in that. Right. It's really more for performance, and that shove you get in the back, talk more about that. That is so okay. much fun. I love that. So effectively, you get the 2.4 turbo in the front that we've driven a few times. It makes virtually the same power of the outgoing V6, 3.5 V6. It just sounds boring. It doesn't have the cool mm -hmm. V6 sounds. But this has the rear shove that is not one-to-one -one with the turbo power delivery. Mm -hmm. So sometimes that comes on first in the rear. Yeah. And you go, whoa, what's going on? And so your dynamics kind of adjust a little bit, sometimes mid-corner. And it's not torque vectoring, but it's managing its left and right power really well. I've noticed that it'll it'll claw out of corners you it don't is. expect it to do. Now, the handling is debatable. The power delivery and actual mechanical grip is very, very good. The mechanical grip is unsurprisingly good, actually. I hustled yeah. it pretty hard on some back roads. And it was unbelievable the speeds I was carrying. That's wild. We said this in Hawaii too. If mileage matters, get the regular hybrid. Yes, because you're it, getting 30 plus. Yeah, yeah. well, we were without seeing trying. like 36 yeah. without trying on the island. Yeah. If you get the gas turbo, I personally am disappointed in that yeah. because I, the old V6 was kind of fun. The turbo is just not that fun. It yeah. just it has a job to do and it does it and it's fine. Um, it's all about emissions. This thing, if you want to be a hoon and haul your kids, this is real. <laughs> this is real. Let me know which one you would get in the comments below. And I will say this interior is really, really nice. Oh, it's great. Anything else? That's it. All right. Thanks for watching TTC Cars. If you want to see more of these, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe below. That helps us make more of these, as Craig always says. If you want to see this thing go up the hill, that's where they go. 
Texas Truck Channel, baby. Stay tuned.